Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series live here in Austin, Texas, as we move forward through our quarterfinals to determine who will go to the semis Ooh. and become the next sacrificial lamb to Cyril. I'm your host, Nathanius, joined by Rotterdam and in control as we make our way to our next series where we will pick actually the next player to uh, go up against yeah. Cyril. They're, they're fighting for the scraps. I can kind of see the king at the table like, chucking out, you know, the, the meat bones, and they're like, oh, I'll take second. I'll fight for third. It's like, oh, that's not bad. It's not a bad finish for these guys. Yeah. It's, a, it's a battle for second place. It kind of feels like, Roddy. Finish. <laughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> I, I don't think they're thinking uh, they're just seeing it like that necessarily. I mean, obviously, you want to keep your dreams alive. I don't think either of them is particularly worried about Sarah at this point because it's, it's going to be a very tough ZVZ series for both of them. And Jeff, you're doing need, the caster thing. They need the WCS points as well. Do you yeah. Really, I mean, obviously, they care a lot. Come on, you're in the quarterfinals, first time of your life, if you're Lambo. You really think he's worried about Sarah right now? No, he's no, focused no. on Nurture. It's interesting, and, and the only reason I'm, I'm interrupting to make this point, it's not even another joke, guys, so chill. It's just, it's just like, it's literally, for the first time, I think, ever, it's at a point where they don't think of it in terms of, they're not worried about him, per se, in their matchup. They're just saying, I'm not going to win. There's no way. There, no, I yeah. mean, we, we, He wouldn't name names. He's that good. It was Snoot earlier who, who you know, we talked to him, and he's just like, oh, yeah, no, nobody can beat him. He's the best by a lot, and it's actually kind of boring. The players are saying that. Yep. When Neeb was dominating, nobody said that because Neeb would drop series. Neeb would lose. He'd have an off, he'd have an off tournament. Right now, Cyril's off tournament is losing to Koreans at uh, in, in Poland. Like, that's it for but the I, most part. Yeah, I just don't think we have to talk too much about Cyril now because for Lembo, this is a really big <laughs> opportunity. Enough. This is the first yeah. time in his career that he's in the quarterfinals. He's someone that we all know has been confident. Let's give him his five minutes. Yeah, I, exactly. I, I, I hate right. to break your heart, Roddy. We do have some words about that last <laughs> match though, from here, Marine, that we wanted to bring okay. up from, uh, from the series that he just Not played. Yet. <laughs> so we did have a cheeky tweet. It says, uh, incorrect approach. I, Jeff, you might be better at okay. reading this, to be honest. It's an incorrect approach. That's series <laughs> got outsmarted once more. Well done by Cyril. I'm not ready for him yet, but I feel like I'll get him at one point. W says, hashtag DHATX18. You know what? Hopeful. Hopeful I like, youth. I like the cheeky thing that you'll hear from Roddy or Pig every once in a while, because because Gabe's a really funny guy, actually. Yeah, but but that really is as close as you can get to him just writing a poem of love. He's just like, that guy's amazing. <laughs> Anybody else, he's like, what a trash player. I yes. can't believe I dropped the series to that guy. It's really fun because the other European pro games would tune in. He's like, oh, I just played Hero Marine on stream. Let's see what he says about me. You like, don't watch Hero Marine stream after you play I can't believe that I even dropped a couple of units against <laughs> this guy. What a terrible build. And we were like, wow, that's not very nice. But Cyril, Cyril gets the love and appreciation. As it and, and rightfully so. Now, Roddy, you can you can tell us your love poem about Lambo finally making it this deep into tournament. No, I just think that's really cool because he's someone that has been very confident. Like, if you talk with him at home story cups in the past, it was always like, I can't believe I lost this early. And some people even said, like, yeah, Lambo is good, but I feel like he thinks he's a little better than he actually is. But now he's really starting to show up. He had a good performance at Leipzig, and now for the first time in his career, he makes it to the quarterfinals. And I think that's awesome. And obviously important to mention, he's been spending a lot of time in Korea, and I think he's been taking the game more serious than he's ever done before. So he's looking good, man. <laughs> yeah. He is. Okay. Kevin, Kevin says he's taking the game more serious than ever as he's on stage. In American swim trunks. I was gonna like, say, I was saying, yeah, he's literally looking good. Those, those, I think he had like a bald eagle on his shorts. That's yeah, at least a bald eagle on those. Yeah, shorts. that's that's about as that's about as much as we can ask for here at the World Championship Series. Thankfully, it was and just course, a bald eagle. You know what I'm saying? And thankfully, his opponent also brings a, a special flavor of style in the form of Nurcio, uh, as a story. Zerg player. I mean, the only person that really upstaged Nurcio this weekend, uh, as far as our fun facts went, was Bly, who's played a little more than 2,000 more tournament games than him, but still 7,000 plus. Nurcio's been around forever, and he had a really sick series against Scarlet, handled everything. And we talked about that uh, Darkness Sanctuary game where he made that call to go roaches. He's like, well, I didn't think it would work, but it did. <laughs> He's just always been around, man. I think back to some of the earlier home story cups when Teja was just destroying everybody. It was still Nurcio kind of putting up a fight and just doing it for a while. And here he is again. He's just kind of funny because he's like, it's a new Nurcio. It's a very quiet. He kind of walks on stage and shakes hands like, let's play some Star you know? <laughs> like, It's very nice. He became the professor. Yeah, he's, he, is, and he is too. His interviews are yeah. actually, and I got to give credit because I've, you know, I've had a lot of jokes about him over the years, but Nurcio is one of the best interviews you can get. He'll give you a serious answer. He'll talk about the players. He's just... He's a, he's a man of the world now. He's a smart guy. We're about to yeah. see him come up onto the main stage. It's time to get into our next match. We have the players coming up onto the stage with Smix. It's going to be Nurcio and Lambo. Are we excited to get this ZBZ going, Sue? 
Let's hear from the audience. Are you guys excited? As the guys on the desk have mentioned, up first we have a German Zerg fighting to continue his best run at a WCS yet, while his opponent also fights to make the semifinals at Austin for the second year in a row. Please welcome up on stage, it is Lambo and Nurcio. The handshake that gets us going into this match. The story, ZVZ Limbo, going about as deep as he's ever been in a StarCraft tournament, looking to get even further before facing off against Terrell. The winner of this is gonna have a hell of a hill to climb, and of course, Nurcio, who has been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Can he be stopped? <laughs> Can either of these guys be stopped? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Control. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe they both can. Uh, but this will be nice. We, you know, it, uh, we, we, saw, we saw a couple of ZVZs out of both these guys, and it was kind of weird, because the Nurcio Scarlet one was a little bit of Scarlet having a really tough time, I think, on this stage. It, a little bit less so Nurcio, like, throwing her for a loop. Uh, and then Lambo faced off against a True that looked... He looked a little bit discombobulated a little bit there. You know, yeah. maybe a... Pretty rambunctious Sixth Street night for him on that Austin <laughs> hot summer <laughs> night. Um, so this, to me, is the more elevated ZBZ. Lambo's yes. been showing a good tournament, as Roddy really wants to talk about. And Nurcio's just always here. Nur if, if, it's a, if it's a StarCraft II tournament, Nurcio is just like, and okay, well, Sunday, when are we starting the round of 16 or 8? Because that's where I'm yeah, at. Yeah, it's starting right now. We're going to go into now. that game. It's time for Lambo versus Nurcio. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the round of eight on our final day, WCS Austin. We are getting ready to start off our next ZVZ. So let's go ahead and without further ado, introduce the blue player in the upper left-hand corner of Acid Plant. This is Clash's Lambo. Looking focused as ever. Facing off against him, though, down here in the bottom right-hand side of the map, hailing from Poland, the Red Zerg. He is Nurcio. I have to do some emoji analysis on what I just saw there, but uh, I don't think you have to do too much analysis to say that uh, Nurcio does come in as a little bit of a favorite when you look at the pedigree. This guy is... <laughs> Just played so many games that you have to know that experience is on his side. But oh, yeah. Lambo, he's having the experience of his life making it so deep in WCS, deeper than ever before. It's a funny spawning pool placement by Lambo. He's kind of like, you're going to go over there. Normally people build a bit of a wall with that, but uh, interesting. He's hiding the spawning pool. Yeah. You scout it, you don't see it. Yeah. It's built at the proxy hatch. Maybe <laughs> like, that's what you think. I don't maybe, know. Maybe there's a third somewhere. <laughs> A yeah, little okay. bit, little bit odd, not I, super impactful. I see Nurcio's spotting pool, I'm like, okay, everything seems exactly like it should. I've uh, been living out in Seoul for a couple of years, I come back to Texas, and everything looks about like that spotting pool. The houses are very <laughs> spread out, everything is just some type of way, and it feels good to be back in Texas, so glad that we get a chance to uh, have an analogy where I can share that. So just checking the creep to see if uh, he spawned in that location, Pig, I'm sure he's pretty... <laughs> confident about that. Yeah, I don't think the uh, the weirdly placed spawning pool is going to make much impact on this game. Both players scouting each other out. Hatch gas pool for both sides. And this is where, of course, things may start to diverge. Your cookie cutter's standard Zerg versus Zerg is kind of just go for a Baneliness, take a fast third. We see Lambert moving out for his uh, kind of below the main base. So this one often sets you up for a little bit of a quicker ground push towards your mm -hmm. opponent if you break these rocks down in front of the hatchery. Uh, that can be really impactful. Whereas Nurcio has gone for a little bit more of a standard third in line with his natural. Oh, that's true. And if both players expand towards their forward thirds, uh, especially on the, here on Acid Plant, it's just seconds away from each other. So you really don't think of, uh, you know, how long a game can last after that because it's generally not very long. So already just a little bit of uh, two versus one. This is not a fair fight. The power of friendship, of course, in the hands of these two yeah. Zerglings as they just 
nibble away. It's all right, Lambo's one called the cousins. They're going to come in together and chase them out of there. Uh, and the Baneless goes down very late for Lambo in comparison to Nurtio. So kind of cutting a bit of a corner there, playing a little bit greedier. I say a little bit. I mean, his six drones were out quite wow. a bit earlier. He was up at 33 versus 27 for quite a few seconds. So Lambo kind of pushing the edges there with the greed a little bit more. Nurtio playing a bit more of a straightforward and standard game and now dropping an evolution chamber. Uh, curious to see which way he goes with that. Nurtio is the kind of guy who I'd normally expect to see a range upgrade, like, you know, this very fast range upgrade into Roaches, but Carapace has been all the rage this tournament. We've seen it over and over again, so that very well could be the case. And we already have Banelings morphing for Nurtio on Lambo's side of the map. <laughs> They're already pre-rallied. No mystery about that. You know exactly where it's going, but a Zergling sneaking into Nurtio's base to get crucial scouting information is going to be very valuable for Lambo as Nurtio's Banes run in. Yeah, I mean, Rotron and Evo going down for Lambo. Lambo, I don't know if you realize it's just how many units are coming right now. His overlords have, of course, spotted this big stream, but oh, good dodging there by Nurtio. A two for two Baneling trade, but there's still three Banelings left over for Nurtio. Lambo really trying to cut some corners here with his defense, but two more Banelings do come back for him. Only a few worker losses. That's not too bad. A pretty clean hold there for Lambo. Ooh, and it could have been so much worse. So many very low HP uh, drones there in that mineral line. I was waiting for the tragic moment, right, where everything explodes and the game just ends instantly. You know, one of those Scarlet GGs, and it's like, okay, well, time for the next series. But, uh, you know, while Lambo, or while Nurtio might know what it's like to make a player just tap out instantly, that's not what happened right there. Lambo did take fairly minimal damage, but still a worker, a deficit, here for Nurtio after all said and done. Yeah, interesting that Nurtio did go for the Evolution Chamber so fast while mounting that Ling Bane. He's going to go for some more light Ling Bane pressure while droning up and adding that Roach tech behind it. Both players wanting to go into the Roach stage of the game. Queen gets isolated on the third base. Nurtio with a nice pickup, starting to get some more worker damage as well. One Bane Ling gets a few Zerglings, a few more go down, but Nurtio is still running rampant in these phases. Uh, Lambo had his, ba his uh, Zerglings out on the map, cancelling some Bane Lings, so he's just now sending them back. Uh, this is actually Actually, a, a little bit of damage done by Nurtio that I wouldn't have expected him to be able to do. He gets the queen pick off, which it just seems also very strange, and even gets into the natural for some drone kills. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it's going to massively swing the game in Nurtio's favor, because remember, Lambo's been pushing that greed a little bit further throughout the game. He's got Roach Speed already on the way, whilst Nurtio's lair hasn't even finished, and Lambo is still up 10 supply throughout all this. Comes in and takes a nice little Ling versus Ling trade, backs off when that turns against him, and Fourth base is on the way for Nurtio, but uh, Lambo already building up into an impressive Roach army. And if he knocks those rocks down and just pushes across the map, there could be a very fearsome Roach push. Now, is this the, real, the realization of the purpose for why Lambo took that forward third base? Was he always planning to go for this right now, or uh, is this something that, you know, it was just, what, what, what's behind that decision? You know, it's weird, right? Because sometimes it is, you, you're thinking about maybe getting that Roach push going, maybe after the Ling Bane pressure slowed mm -hmm. him down, it kind of just like, changed it up a little. Sometimes people just prefer the more kind of defensive position there where it's it's got a few tighter chokes into it. So sometimes it is just a bit of personal preference and they prefer that layout as the game goes on. Lambo himself looks like he wants to go for a fourth yeah. phase as well. He's still got a very fearsome Roach army. Look at the army supply tab. Ooh, that is a huge Roach advantage for Lambo. That is true. It's a little bit deceptive because roaches take up a lot of supply just as is. But when you're fighting roach versus roach, yeah, more just wins. And I, I don't know, this is going to be a little bit scary for Nurtio. He's going to need to have a big uh, you know, swell of units here in just a second. Now, he is wrapping around from the back with a nice force of Zerglings. So maybe they can come back, but I think they're actually trying to snipe off some reinforcements. And that means it's just going to be more versus less here. A couple of Ravagers in the back, though. We'll see how good their uh, corrosive files can be. First couple come down. They are dodged away from the defense looks okay here for wow. Nurtio, but he is still taking losses. So many workers being pulled in. I like the decision to do that by Nurtio, but it doesn't change the fact that this push is just so big and it's doing so much damage. The Zerglings were trying to intercept the reinforce during this, but they all got cleaned up. Lambo's roaches are now starting to spill into the front lines, and I love the decisiveness from Lambo. Nurtio was caught here trying to get two more upgrades. Lambo just said, nah, -uh. everything is going committed to this attack right here, right now. He's already got a massive worker lead from it, but he is not done yet. Yeah, I thought it looked good for Nurtio able to hold even with some drone losses, but the rally across.
across the map here is just non-stop. Lambo with a parade push of his own coming through and crushing this third base of Nurcio. This would be so huge if Lambo can close this game out here. It'll give him a lot of momentum in this series. Remember that record. But hey, starts it out with a quick victory. Lambo, decisive, solid defense. You know, I was worried for him. I won't lie, when I see a player playing that defensive in Zerg versus Zerg, having Banelings running in their mineral line, I'm like, oh, this is not going to go well. But he only took four drone losses. Fantastic micro. He defended the follow-up waves of pressure quite well. And somehow he just came out on top in the supply, committed very decisively to a Roach push. A really clean game plan from Lambo, and it worked out very well. Yeah, absolutely. The head-to-head -head is what Rotterdam, of course, loves to talk about. An incredible scoreline, Nurcio dominant. But I think the bigger point is the shape that Lambo's in right now. Taking game number one gives him a lot of momentum. He's making his deepest WCS run ever, and I think he could go all the way for Nurcio. We're used to seeing this guy top eight, top four, even winning tournaments. But right now, he's down a game against Lambo, and I think this has to make him feel really good. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Lambo, he's got a lot of his own expectation as well as the German fans on his shoulders. He's been building up for a long time. He's had a lot of bad bracket luck. I mean, it's kind of funny with these German players. TLO last year always running into Nieben being eliminated in the round of 32. This time around, it's been, uh, you know, Lambo over the past few years getting knocked out by a lot of the champions. But he's finally kind of just making his way through. Even as he runs into good players, he's winning these series. And he's kicking this one off in a very, very nice way. He absolutely is. Has to feel good after an early win. I think the uh, the stat that's scrolling down there on the bottom of your screen, a 70% ZVZ win rate for Nurcio after patch 4.0. Like, I mean, I mean, those are like Jadong ZVZ numbers. The, oh, the yeah. originator of just, I know a matchup way better than just everyone else. And, and when you see the pedigree that Nurcio has established here, all of a sudden this win just means so much more for Lambo. So I know it's a ZVZ and we've uh, kind of had a few of those already this tournament pig but we're really just getting down to the cream of the crop and when that starts to include guys like Lambo you have to know that he is just on a tear this tournament oh yeah I love seeing that confident opening in game one the next map will be catalyst so gonna be a little bit of a shorter map both players no doubt gonna be worried about those early one base zergling baneling rushes worried about fast roach pushes across the map as well the distance is just so much shorter so it's gonna be interesting to see how this series rounds up after that it's dream catcher and then onto lost and found and if we make it to map five darkness sanctuary which I would love to see a bit more zerg versus zerg on that map we're just building brood lords and ultras. It's such a big map. Oh, we'll yeah. see if we get there. I mean, that would just be absolutely epic. But before we get to game five, we have to get to game two, Pig. Feel fairly confident about that. So let's get into it and start by introducing our blue player in the upper left-hand corner of Catalyst. This is Lambo. And his opponent down here in the bottom right hand side of the map. The guy who has played so many tournaments throughout his career. A couple of championships under his belt. Hailing from Poland, the Red Zerg player. Let's give it up for Nurcio. There is, of course, a three-time major tournament champion. This guy just finished beating a hundred helpless <laughs> nerds in a row in a show match he did with Red Bull. And I do feel like if you are sponsored re with Red Bull, your Zergling should start off with Zergling speed because it gives them wings. But um, unfortunately, man. we have some balance in the game that stops that advertising uh, opportunity from being possible. I think the biggest thing to watch out for is this consistently strange pool place. Remind me to ask him about that. <laughs> Later. I'm really Why curious. do you put it there? I'm really curious. It's the, the Zerg yeah. Feng Shui. I'm gonna ask him about that. You know, it, it's funny, like, there are these, like, very rare rushes where someone sneaks a drone across and they build a spine in the tiny bit of, like, fog on the edge of creep. <laughs> but I very much doubt it's place to spot that. Um, and just like, maybe, but I don't think so. We're gonna, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely gonna ask him after this series. I'll, uh, I'll go find him backstage. But uh, not a real big impact in the series. You know, there's a lot of places to wedge your queens. The advantage of this placement is you can obviously put the queen between the pool and the hatchery. Yep. Zerglings can't get in, but you can kind of do the same thing and just put the queen between the minerals and the gas anyway, even without that wall. It still keeps the queen protected, so not a major difference. Uh, there is a small difference.
difference in the builds here, though. Lambo not starting up Zergling speed yet and actually not building Zergling. Wow. So he's just going drones, no links for scouting. Lambo has a build in mind. He says, I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm pretty sure it's going to be going straight up to, like, Lair and Evo Chamber and that sort of stuff. We'll find out, of course. Nurture, on the other hand, is playing a more reactive style. He's making Zerglings to scout. Mm -hmm. He's going for Zergling speed. He's going for the third base. He's playing your very stock standard ZVZ, whereas Lambo is saying, nah, -uh, I have a plan. I'm going to start my third and fourth queen. Two queens are going to come to the front. And even though he's mining gas this whole time, he's saving it all for the roach stage. There we go. Evolution Chamber going down. No Ling speed, no mobility. Lambo just wants to get to the roach stage. Actually, Ling speed Wait, starting up okay. right now. He is going to start that. And that's Could a little bit strange, but there's also a roach warren on the way at the same time. Could be for a Roachling all-in. Uh, one of the most surprising builds. You see the Evo and the Roach Horn, you think, hey, he's going to get a Lair, Roach Speed, plus one. And they're like, no, I just made 10 Roaches and 50 Zerglings. Let's go. On a small map like this, it is one of the most surprising all-in attacks you can pull out. So definitely something Lambo might be thinking about. And one thing, especially with that spawning pool, sometimes maybe you expect a random Zergling to run into your main. Like... <laughs> Man, I just love it when players do what I'm talking about. A random Zergling to run into your main and see what's going on there. Uh, didn't hide it with that placement, so my conjecture was off. But uh, <laughs> that is a little bit of a strange timing as well. But it's yeah. not going to be a stranger for what we're about to see. Three Roaches already on the way. And this is going to be maybe a little bit ahead of the schedule Nurtio is used to. So many overlords getting made. And that's always a sign of aggression. But these Zerglings are going to slide in. If they get in the main, yeah. I mean, seeing the Zerglings pool, uh, the spawning pool wiggling already is a big tell. But now... I'm not sure, did he spot those roaches? Yeah, 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 yeah. he's got to know. He's got to know. Spine crawler immediately goes yeah. down. Nurtio realizes there is something naughty on the way. <laughs> Lambo is not playing a straight up game. He is putting all of his cards on the table and saying, here is an extremely fast roach queen zergling attack. Even walking two queens out across the map with transfuse to reinforce. Lambo wants to kill Nurtio right now. He has to kill him right now. He's down in work as he's down in tech. This is an all or nothing push. And I think Nurcio, while he did react very quickly to having scouted it, might just have seen it a few seconds too late. The wall at the front is up and ready to go, but is it up in time? I mean, it, this is already a lot of roaches across the map. There's more coming in here. There's just nothing there to defend Ooh. for Nurcio. Should have built those spines behind the mineral line or in the back somewhere. He thought he could defend in time, but this is Catalyst. It's such a short map. And Lambo choosing his strategy accordingly, jumping on top of this. The roaches being surrounded by the Ling Roach. A spine crawler does finish, starting to headbutt those roaches, but they focus it down. Lambo, so decisive in this series. Even starts to land transfuses on his own roaches. This is an amazing push from Lambo, but a lot of roaches are starting to rally out. Zerglings as well from Nurture. He's getting a nice little wraparound, but as the Ling Reinforce comes in, it feels like the numbers are on Lambo's side. Hey, we're seeing a 2 GG, he takes the second game, goes up 2-0 against Nurcio, who has to feel a little bit strange in this spot. It's been forever since he has been able, to, or since he's been down in this matchup. Lambo, he's grooving out. He's feeling good right now. Such a cheeky build there. It really does take a lot of gumption, a lot of mental uh, toughness, I think, to choose that build order, because if it gets spotted, Earlier, uh, if Nurtio's first Zergling scout actually notices the Zergling kind of uh, upgrade, you basically mm -hmm. you look at the spawning pool, you see it wobbling, that's a huge tell there. But Nurtio, by the time he scouted that, he kind of came through the main. Funnily enough, he didn't see the spawning pool straight away with the second Zerglings. He saw the roaches, he put two and two together, but it was like 20, 30 seconds too late. Yep. Even though he started the spines and the roaches straight away, he wasn't ready for the push. Lambo's gamble pays off 2-0 lead now he's got he's got two games to spare he can start playing even riskier at this point like he's got so many mistakes he can make and still come out on top in this series i mean you talked about how uh not crazy but just how uh you know, nerve-wracking it can be to choose a, a build like lambo just did against nurcio a guy that you just haven't beat in years years that these two players have existed in the world and yeah. Lambo has yet to take uh, a series off of uh, Nurcio in the past I think 13 games. None of the stats that you see Wax Angel scrolling below your screen say anything good for Lambo uh, other than you know this being the deepest that he's made it in a WCS event. 
but all of a sudden we're about to flip the script, Pig, and you have to know there are a lot of thoughts going through Nurchio's mind right now that he probably hasn't thought in a while. Absolutely. It's going to be tough to turn this series around. Down 0-2. He's got his road ahead of him. Well, let's start up our road here on Dreamcatcher for our third game of the series. Starting in the bottom right-hand corner in the blue, make some noise for Lambo. And up here in the top left-hand side, the Polish champion, a man of great renown. But he's got a long road ahead of him to turn this series around. He needs to make the fabled reversal happen. He needs to win three games in a row to bring this series back. Let's hear it for the man in the red. He is Nurcio. You know, I can't help but think of the last time I saw Nurcio losing some Zerg versus Zerg games like this. Uh, it makes me think of, I believe it was IEM Shanghai 2016, Nurture, one of the absolute favorites. He was in some of the best form of his life at that tournament uh, about two years ago now, and he actually lost to Violet there, who was kind of on a downswing. It was, you know, Violet retired uh, at this point, and he was not really, uh, we said he had no chance to beat Nurture. He came out with some pre-planned timing attacks, some kind of gamble, but very well executed attacks. And Nurture was always just barely not quite ready. And I feel like this is a very powerful way to play Zerg versus Zerg. If you take the aggressive momentum, you have a game plan going into it. Mm -hmm. All you need to focus on is kind of just denying your opponent's information and executing a very crisp attack. And that second game was the textbook example of that. Nurture, is he just going to keep playing reactive or is he maybe going to take a risk himself? Is he maybe going to go out there, be aggressive, put some momentum on, try to kind of force some more mistakes out of his opponent rather than expecting perfect play from himself? Well, Zergling's on the way for Nurture Drones for Lambo. So once again, he is taking a uh, more passive approach to the early game. We're not seeing, and this is kind of strange to me, we're not seeing any like 13-12s, 12 pools, any yeah. like super ultra crazy early aggression. Uh, so that does mean that our players are you know, just playing a little bit more straight up. But uh, I was talking to Lambo earlier, saying he's having some problems with jet lag, can't really sleep, so he's uh, not feeling 100% for this. It's a little bit confusing because he looks <laughs> Looks 100% uh, to me. And yeah. uh, he was talking to me about Serral and some of his builds that we got a chance to see earlier. And that, uh, you know, they were communicating, you know, how do you play both this matchup and the one that Serral uh, was playing earlier. You're starting to see some effects of being kind of touched by the gods. Some very solid build orders yeah. against a very solid player. You know what's really cool about this set of openings is Lambo's doing the exact same thing as last game. And as far as Nurchio knows, there could be that same attack mm -hmm. that comes his way. But for now, Nurchio, he's actually committing to a lot of Zerglings and he's letting his Baneling Nest finish uh, despite seeing two Queens at the front. So not making the hard read that it is indeed this sort of uh, no Zergling speed play and actually continuing to commit to Zerglings. A uh, mass of Zerglings on the way. Oh Baneling's morphing. Nurchio, I was talking about it. Is he just going to commit to some aggression and try to force some mistakes from Lambo? It looks like he's decided to, but this is such a crazy map to do that on. It's such a tight ramp. It is so hard to break through. He's shown his hand. He's rushing across this map. Is Lambo going to be able to hang on? I mean, Lambo already has a wall up and running, but these Banelings are going to bust right through. The Queens of the Zerg are not going to be able to stop them if they do. Man to start breaking through. There they do, busted on the Queens, a nice rewall, but the Zerglings sneak through. They are the hand that wraps gently around the side of the Queens and starts to take them out one by one. Three Queens down and only now, just a few meager roaches popping out for Lambo. Is this going to be enough? Could Ravager Morph to save one of those roaches? The drone's being pulled in to help reinforce this engagement. The rewall on the Evo was great because it actually took out the last two Banelings that were coming in. If those two Banelings made it into the mineral line, this would have been a disaster. But it seems like Lambo here hanging on just barely. He's got the rewall down and it's still non-stop Zerglings, but they don't get in. They've got no way to break through. Nurture was not droning behind us. Look at all these Zerglings on the map. Worthless, not able to get anything done. And Nurture is wishing he'd swapped into droning a lot earlier there. It would have been fine if he'd started droning one production cycle earlier. As it is though, he's down on tech and he's only barely even on workers. And you were talking about maybe seeing ranged upgrade uh, earlier in the series from Nurcio. This time it's Lambo, who after surviving is going to have this upgrade hit. This will allow him to two-shot Zerglings. He is 
swelling in supply, all these roaches coming out, and it's nothing but zerglings coming through for Nurcio wow. with a plus one carrot base on the way that w realistically will not finish before the game does. Yeah, Nurcio, and he hates being in this scenario, but he is playing it correctly in that he's saying, I'm way behind, I have to take a gamble. Let's just cut workers and build non-stop units. Now, if Lambo droned up a little bit here, took a third base, okay. added a second Evo chamber, this would work out pretty well. Suddenly you flood in with zerglings, you surround the roach pressure, crush it, counterattack at the same time, and suddenly the game's back in Nurcio's court. That's what's playing out in Nurcio's head. Unfortunately, Lambo's just holding down the roach key, man, and that is perfect <laughs> against someone who's just building unupgraded zerglings. As you said, there's no way that carapace finishes in time. Even though that would cancel out the plus one range, it is not ready, and this is such a scary army. <laughs> A cheeky Ravager leading the way. Uh, oh! Actually, that Roach doesn't block the choke, so that's a little bit heartbreaking. The drone's forced to be pulled. This is not going to be ideal for Lambo, but I think he might just have a critical mass right here. As long as the Banelings don't get good connections, the Ravager is back yeah. in the back, and this actually looks pretty good. The Roach is split up, so maybe... Uh, okay, yeah, he's safe back at home as well, and that means that this attack is just going to crush through. GG Lambo takes a 3-0. Against all odds, against the history. He says it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. This is the new Lambo. He's been training harder than he ever has before. And this is his moment. The deepest run he has ever had at WCS. Round of eight and now round of four. Shaking the hand of the man he hasn't beat in gears. Pulling it out where it counts. And I can't wait to hear what he has to say. I, I, re I mean, realistically, you couldn't have expected this result, Pig. So let's go ahead and find out what Lambo has to say about it as we head on stage with Smix. Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations, Lambo. Not only is this your first top four at a WCS ever, you've finally broken the curse you had against Nurture. It was 15 games, 15 game losing streak. You smashed it out of the park with that 3-0 over him. How amazing do you feel right now? I feel really fucking amazing. Yeah. Well put, well put. Uh, I think we can feel your sincerity from the answer there. Uh, I want to talk about game two because it was a 3-0, but game two, your, the strategy that you chose seemed very a laser-esque in a way with the Roach, you know, like not really teching up. So I know that you guys are also good friends. So was there influence from, it, uh, from him at all? Uh, no, that's actually a build that Rogue uses a lot. And I showed that I like to go two base layer before. And usually against that, you can drone up a bit longer and you can delay your Roach for him. So I thought I, I play a build that looks the same, but it's actually uh, all in. So that's why it worked. Well, we just saw you take down Nurcio, but up next you kind of have the final boss, even though it is the semifinal. You have Cyril standing in front of you. But you have this crazy momentum going on. You know, you had the first top eight yesterday, first top four today. Can you make your first grand finals against Cyril? I, I really hope so. You know, all of this so far has been off of my ZVZ, which is my worst matchup, to be honest. So uh, I guess not anymore. Uh, I talked to Cyril before, he told me, yeah, your Korean baboon ZVZ won't work on me, but <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see indeed. Congratulations again. Best of luck in your match against Cyril Nathanius. Back to you. Thank you, Smix, as we have another semi-finalist ready to go in the form of Lambo with a 3-0 victory over Nurcio, toppling the seasoned veteran. Been a lot of three zeros, Nate, or three ones. Yeah, I think uh, my analysis earlier, kind of each day, I'm like, you know what? Trimming the fat. If we keep trimming all this fat, there's not going to be anything left except for Cyril <laughs> in the end, I guess. Uh, but I do like seeing that confidence. I do like hearing from him that he's he's going into it with a, a bit of humor and the idea that he has a fighting chance. One of the worst things you can hear, and it, StarCraft players will give this to you, is like, what do you think about your chance to the grand finals? Like, I'm dead. Zero <laughs> percent. You're like, what a great final, you know, or, or uh, semifinal. But in this case, he believes he's got a chance, and I like that. I hope he does. Does he, though? Does he, though? <laughs> That's the question you got to ask yourself. Does he, though? Are you asking me that? Yeah, does he? Does, does he, he, does he, Roddy? Kevin? 
Right, yeah, you're always I, I can't say anything. I can't say anything here because if I'm gonna make a point for Lambo, two, three words into my sentence, Jeff is gonna interrupt me and he's gonna stop me. Look at and this guy gonna going be, for the Reddit thread. Yeah, come he, on. And he's gonna be like, "No, I'm gonna stop you right there." Can we get some love in the chat for Roddy's positivity? <laughs> Trying to you know say what, that Kevin, someone I will get eaten alive yeah. by Cyril. No, you won't take me serious. I don't even know if I'm. Well, that myself. I can't help. No. <laughs> come on. I don't know if I can take myself serious if I'm gonna make a case here that Lambo is gonna take out Cyril, but I do agree with Spix. He's carrying a lot of momentum, and sometimes, you know, it's like everything is a bonus from this point. Let's be honest, a top four finish when you've never even entered the round of eight before this tournament, that must feel amazing. So maybe with a little bit of momentum on his side, a couple of crazy builds, but I really like the dance on stage there. It's like, your Korean Zerg baboon strategies won't work on me. Uh, I think it should be fun, at least. I like Cyril saying that, too. Yeah, yeah, that's can do the impression. It's, it's been a great tournament for Lambo, regardless of what happens after this. And I think he deserves the love he's gotten from the crowd. He's got some good cheers. He's got those nice America shorts on. I'd give, him, I'd give him a good cheer. A lot of these Zergs, by the way, for the first time, <laughs> making some pretty deep runs in this tournament. So it's many like, Zergs, it's just weird to have like, That's WCS. crazy that it's all happening at once. I feel like if I were to crunch the numbers well enough here, we kind of You crunch out. those numbers while we take a look at the updated yeah. bracket, ladies and gentlemen. Half of the tournament finalists are ready. We have Cyril going up against Lambo to determine our first grand finalist. Coming up, Mana versus Snoot and a Laser versus Special. There's still an opportunity here for us to have that that coveted <laughs> each race representation if in Snoot the top wins, four. If Snoot and a Laser win, what happens to the Zerg players' Twitters? That's the question I need. What to happens to, to StarCraft balance completely? I'm going to look up the Muslim Twitch the second chat. that happens. Be like, the Muslim on Twitter. <laughs> uh, Twitch, right. we, we put the Twitch mods on high alert in case the Zergs keep winning. Uh, yeah. you know, we've, we've played slow mode, R9K. We've got everything ready to shut it, you guys down. Yeah, it's funny, though, because before this weekend, I really had the feeling like this WCS event, with the <laughs> amount that they've been complaining lately, things are not going that well for the Zergs. <laughs> and we've got a bunch of strong Protoss coming in. The Terrans are looking better than ever. But we're not that just yet. I think the next two semifinals, there's a really good chance that Special does make it into the semis, of course. But yeah, it would be quite funny because I didn't see it coming this event, and that's the first time in a long time that I did not didn't see all these Zergs coming. European Zergs to swarm over <laughs> a tournament. Well, let's find out if that keeps happening as we're going to go to break. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the World Championship Series. We'll be right back.